Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 21. I am Ryan the GM, it is the 30th of September 2019. Here are the players. Hi, I'm Callum. I play Lord Eric Greenwood, the human sorcerer. Hi, I'm Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, who is the half old druid. Hi, I'm Sophie. I play Kitty Kill, a tabaxi rogue. Hello, I'm Stuart. I play Reach, a half elf monk. Excellent, and we are currently sans Scott, who plays Crumbar, the Crumbar. So, who remembers what happened last time? Well, the king took... what's his face? Took the kid. <laughs> yes, exactly. Pretty much the, the entire campaign, really. Watch his face, the important one. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep, yeah, the king took Errol. It's a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, nerd has a different meaning now, Callum, thanks to you. <laughs> you ruined it? it. Yes. So... Wait, what? Yeah. Don't worry, I'll remind you in the After Dark chat. So... What, what else happened? Besides things. confusing Callum. Um, <laughs> the... Super secret crystallization of the meeting room at the very end of last session. Oh yeah, the purple swirls with the light blue and the pink. Yeah. Well, that's what I had in my head. Yep, and everything crystallising and sealing. Mm -hmm. We found out the princess was the... What's her face? I'm good with names, okay? I've worked retail too long. I just know faces. <laughs> have we, though? Oh, I have. Honey, I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I think what Callum maybe meant there was, have we learned that, though? Well, yeah. Miss Nair is the hooded woman. I mean, I think that was Crumbar's thinking. Yes. And he has been, you know, 100% correct. <laughs> so far. Um, also, Scott, I love you, Scott. You know I do. Uh, but Crumbar, you know, he's a... Crumbar. <laughs> he, he is a Crumbar. <laughs> <laughs> he is his own breed. Yep, Crumby. Crumby. So, <laughs> yes. What else happened? Do you remember? So we've got good old Magna turning up and going. This is my spear. Goodbye. Um, you've got Justoria being like, so what's going on in secret? Uh, um. mm, as well. I think what else happened. There was some weird priests, right? Hmm. Yeah, the chatty priests. <laughs> yeah, priests of Pa, the god of like understanding. <laughs> um, such a creepy god, really. We understand. Um, do you know? Do you? <laughs> do you know? Mm. Um, I think what else happened? What else did? Am I missing anything? Did you think of anything else that happened that I'm totally missing? No, maybe mm. all good. Um. I think that's right. I think we're good. Um, I remember the king was like very. Why do you keep referring to this item as a yeah boy? So Crumbar it's like he doesn't even see it. Yeah, Crumbar was like, "That's my friend," talking to like the cocooned Eremos, <laughs> and the king's like looking at him, going, "Ah, you're the type of person that would call your hammer a friend." And then Reach was like, "He in fact does." <laughs> 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 So uh, yeah, that definitely did happen. Also, yeah, it was a very interestingly confused look on the the king's face when he's like, "This is a thing. It is my thing. I am taking my thing. Goodbye." <laughs> <laughs> Toodles. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting. Um, I think that was pretty much the gist of it. Let's talk about goals. Now we've done a recap. So always believe in yourself. You're indestructible. Oh. <laughs> you have the power to know. <laughs> oh. So, the current goal, as it stands, it says, find out what Jostoria knows about Eremos. I feel like we're about to find out. Yes. So Easy XP. So I skip to five years later. <laughs> it's just like, five <laughs> years later, you just have amnesia. Uh. Wait, do we lose all XP if we have amnesia? 
Nah, you've, God, hope you've leveled up since then, back to exactly where you are. Uh, <laughs> it's easier admin for me. Uh, are we all happy with that goal, as is? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Aye. Good. What's that, Scott? You're happy with that too? Yep, you said <laughs> yeah. Combat says yes. <laughs> um, right. Let us go back into the game. So, we're in the crystallized room. Just story is there, eyeing everyone widely. Who says what? I guess I'll put us back to the horizon page. Mm. It just looks a bit more magic-y. Someone say something smart. Crumbar. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just looks at Crumbar like. Uh. Slowly puts like some kind of profiterole in mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think the the gist of what she said last was pretty much, you know, we have to kind of keep that out of my father's hands, for lack of mm. a better way of phrasing it. Um, so yeah, what's ever these thoughts? What's ever these kind of. Um, you know, if I just snapshot you, how would you just look? Perturbed. So standard. <laughs> <gasps> Is it really if it's accurate though? Mm-hmm. Truth hurts. I'm always perturbed. Right. So, uh, okay. Uh, Princess, just story up. What? Did your father mean about the the child being a thing? And then she um, she turns to you, and obviously she's still holding her hand up with this kind of crackling energy coming off of it to hold back the uh, you know secrets. And she uh, her face kind of softens a bit as she looks at you and she says, "Unfortunately, my father sees the child." as an object because it was forged by him I don't know the answer to that but I would I believe so he was forged like you'd forge a sword and she kind of looks at you like now when someone's waiting for an answer and they give you a look as if they're waiting for you to answer them. It's the look she gives you when you ask that question. I just got I just got a picture of goop falling into like a child's cast and doing <laughs> But like actually just pouring in like molten metal into child yeah. mold. That's kinda of creepy. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, okay. You can have that if you wish. <laughs> I don't want it, but I've got it. <laughs> We've got that in the thought bubble. <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> As I'm sat there trying to contemplate, I just put like my hand on my chin, thumb going up one side of the jaw, finger the other side, and the other three fingers are curled up underneath the chin. Just like, hmm. And as you kind of sit like that, maybe you lean back slightly, and Justoria says, "My thoughts exactly." Now I look smart. <laughs> we know how much looks are important to you. With that fancy red outfit you got. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting, is it the blue one? No, I left that one. <laughs> That's in some weird non-existent realm. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard king has that one. Damn it, we need to go fight him so I get my robe back. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally your motivation. Give me my robe. Give me my robe and I'll fight for you! This is when you've met an enemy of Dane who had loaned you the robe in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of explaining that to him, they'll go back to the library. Where's my clothes? You were only supposed to borrow them. Like, well, see, I hit a book with a hammer, I met the Wizard King, he offered me his bed, I then left naked, and then saved his daughter. So that's why you don't have your robes. 
Yeah, they have been on a journey. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the journey hasn't ended yet, as far as we know. And those ropes have their own adventure now. <laughs> Spin-off series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, meanwhile, back in the room. So, what's going through Arya's head at the moment, given that it seems like the princess isn't necessarily 100% supportive of her father. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of ways to hopefully get him back. As in um, Aramos? She can't help us, we can still work against her. Well, not against her, but like without her. Mm -hmm. Very clear definition though, between against and without. Very important to specify that in advance. Um, the, the things to consider though would be the creature that you've met in the kind of, I guess, bizarre ca like kind of corridors you were in, um, the thing that was choking her, and then mm. subsequently Eric. She couldn't stop that, but he could. Yeah. You know, being the Wizard King. Um, so. It's maybe why she's not made any active moves against him, right? Yeah, because he he's still protecting her at the end of the day. Exactly right. It's her dad, and also he's the wizard king. You know that kind of outranks princess, sadly. So yeah, she's just kind of sat there, and. If nobody's likely to say anything, she's going to release the spell that's keeping the privacy ongoing. So if you want to say anything a bit shady, I'd say it now. Uh. Why was the child made? Why does any What's weapon get made? Uh. Yes, but how is he a weapon? All we know about him is that he's a kid that writes books that seem to have no information, but when he touches them, they suddenly have writing in them. It's because all he wants is power. That's the only thing this guy respects. Yeah, but a special weapon's usually made for a special reason. Yeah, to take more power. So where's he going to yeah. take the power from? Hollow Wizard King. But no. <laughs> <laughs> you might build a sword to kill a dragon, for example. Is there a special dragon he's out to get? Oh. Might be more than just one dragon he's trying to kill. Yeah, I want to know which ones. <laughs> I think, like, well. Justorius just watching the back and forth as you're obviously kind of mulling this over. Crumbar slowly puts on a profiterole in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Only one? Just one. The one that we oh, can come see. come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, um,. She's going to stay quiet as you discuss this because obviously you clearly have more to say um, to each other necessarily, not necessarily her. And well, that she's basically taking in obviously the theories that you are kind of floating out there. Hmm. One other thing was we've got you here at the moment. I uh, don't know if we did mention it, but the Golden Citadel is likely to be attacked by whatever's coming out of the, the abyss. Could do with any help. If you can spare some, yeah. she kinda, even a few wizards would help. Yeah. She kind of like nods, kind of solemnly, and she says, "I would not leave our golden brothers defenseless." And she kind of nods. I will send what I can. However, this wild magic that seems to be surging all over the kingdom needs to be addressed by me. It is my duty to deal with that, just like it is the duty of the Golden Order to defend us against the Abyss. Okay, cool. And then, um, yeah, what about Kitty? What's Kitty doing? Totally not stuffing Professor Rolls in my <laughs> face. <laughs> <laughs> Um, sort of say like around a mouthful do you know the hooded lady and she kind of like tilts her head and goes 
I'm sure many ladies wear hoods. Do you have a specific lady in mind? We don't know a name. Uh, Celeste. Oh, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you've got yeah. amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, okay. I have been travelling. Then she kind of like... She kind of turns to you, Reach, and she goes, I don't know this name specifically. Celeste? Yeah, mysterious lady walks past the... We cannot walk. Uh, asked us to go to the, the abyss. Uh, actually, no. Asked us to find Eremos. Uh. Keep him away from the king. Well, she asked you to do that, not me. But I guess I'm tagging along for a bit. And what is your part in this journey? She's looking directly at you, Eric. Good to question. help them so they can help me. And what is it you require help with? At this point, I just like, I assume I'm still glowing blue, so and there's nope. no point to my eyes. Right, nope. remember, okay. remember since you've walked in this room, you haven't. Oh yeah, because you can't. Ah, yeah, no, I'll just say, well, hopefully to find my parents and break this bond. She kind of nods and goes, do you have any idea where your parents may have gone? No. This is why I'm trying to find a clue. She kind of like smiles softly because obviously she's had a lot of um, fairly directed comments to you, obviously the last session as well, um, regarding your extra passenger. Like you're speaking openly about that, etc, etc. Um, so she's obviously catching on to a lot of what's going on with you even if Eric doesn't necessarily um, she definitely seems to be aware of more things than she's openly just discussing regarding you and your uh, character choices shall we say <laughs> um, I mean we're in a room that is like kind of like, I don't know oh yeah, it's, air -gapped. Swirly and Ma it's magically yeah. air-gapped there we go Instinctually, it feels safe to speak about it to the people present. Mm -hmm. All right, well, in that case, then, does Eric have any more to share on that? Or is that what you said? About that, um, that's a... That's a... Uh, if they want to know, they can ask. Okay, cool. So you don't offer it up, but you wouldn't necessarily keep it bottled up. Okay, yeah. cool. And then, Gestoria, um you can see her almost wince as if like the concentration of this is quite quite difficult and then you can see her kind of breathing slowly like deliberately and then she says I would like assistance in keeping this weapon Eremos your friend from whatever my father's purpose happens to be. Can I rely on your assistance with this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Of course. And she kind of like nods Solomon and she kind of like turns to Arya since Arya is the first person she really spoke to at the, at the gang. Arya. And that's what? All right. Oh, do we still have an area? Maybe. Are you muted? Yeah, I've, I've muted yep. myself. Sorry, yep. and I wasn't figuring out how to unmute myself for some reason. So yeah, everybody else has kind of agreed to help her out, mm -hmm. and she's looking at you because you're the first person she spoke to and had like tea with. Oh. Well, yes, I would be happy to assist in this. So she looks quite relieved at the fact that obviously she hasn't just outed herself in front of a bunch of people like, now nah, we're loyal to the Wizard King. <laughs> 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 and then um, like she kind of visibly relaxes a little. Um, and she says, first we must start denying his 
ultimate control over the land. We have to slowly weaken him. Not that I wish any harm to my father, but I don't necessarily believe he has the kingdom's best interests at heart. She kind of just looks at everyone very sharply, very briefly. Yep. And then uh, she says, I'm not altogether convinced that he didn't use you to escort the weapon to the abyss, since the tear in the abyss may have been a direct result to young Aramos's exposure. Is, uh, I have uh, I feel like I'm not I'm not too sure whether the king wanted anything to do with the abyss, but all I know is this gem that I got from Lord Jenis, he has one very small. And she kinda of, like nods solemnly, yeah. The eyes of Janus are not given lightly. And you can see that she's still clearly like maybe a little jealous. <laughs> like that probably is one of the sources of her father's like power, quite frankly. You know, some super powerful teleporting jewel. Just lets him go where he wants. It's pretty useful. Um yeah, it is. <laughs> Also, let him move there most though as well. You may have noticed that when you couldn't earlier. Mm. So yeah, mm. you could have whacked him with your hammer. God, it's not charged. <laughs> Low battery, five percent. Zero percent at the minute. And um, she says, "We will have to." investigate the wild magic surges throughout the land and we will hide our operations under the guise of restoring the natural balance of magic. She kind of looks again at every day as if makes sense, you know? Legitimate yeah. reason to fix problems under yep. let's undermine the wizard king. <laughs> um, she then uh, looks straight to Eric and says, You will present a problem. Me? You have met with my father before, have you not? I kind of awkwardly shift in my chair and uh, look down and go, I have. And what does everybody else say or react? that given that this is the first time you're properly hearing of this right what like eric has met with the wizard king previously so the fitter all finds its way flying towards his head <laughs> athletics check to dodge can we do that? uh no but you can do a deck save <laughs> yeah that works Cool. Nope. Nope. It nope. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Prefer to roll. Can I, can I roll like to see how much damage it does? Uh, no, it's a prefer to roll. <laughs> uh, I'm not even in life in there. You don't know. <laughs> um, so I really hope you wouldn't have just put it on a knife and threw it as a it. <laughs> <laughs> a tomahawk throw. <laughs> Traitor! So, yeah, like... A profit roll, knife in the back. So Kitty th throw, <laughs> throws a profit roll at him. Um, Reach, Arya, any other reactions? I think Crumbar would want to hit you, but we'll forego that for now. Well, they did want us to punch someone. That's true. <laughs> I would just look outraged. Mm. That he's not told us. Admittedly, he didn't even know what the king looked like in his defense. <laughs> so it's like... To be fair, you don't know that, though. <laughs> no, but he could tell us that. Hint, hint. <laughs> I mean, have I had chance yet? I mean, this is it. Like, what is Eric's response to everyone going, wait a minute, traitor? <laughs> <laughs> it's more like I've not had a suitable chance to tell you. Like, you want me to tell you while we're waiting to see how Erebus is doing? Remember that yeah, time that you waited like, like two hours unbody. in that room back there? <laughs> I mean, I went in there. Was I was getting fixed up by the priests? No, nope, you you were all sat in the room when the king left. He's waited over I mean, an hour. It yep. was all concerned about Eremos, It's fine. 
I think I was concerned with finding corners. Mm-hmm. And then oh yeah, you would have a fucking trip. You would have never understood what was going on. Yeah, that's that was in this room. <laughs> yep, you were tripping. I, oh, I wanted to open my book. Mm-hmm. Priorities, right? Book first amongst everything else. So yeah, that's everyone. Three perfect rolls and staring at you. Is Reach having any reactions to the fact that uh, Eric has been outed as having Just silenced? Because yeah, hmm? has silenced off mm-hmm. about it, but yeah. And then um, just Doria leans in and says, Perhaps now would be a, a welcomed time for explanations to your... And she looks at everyone else. Allies? Okay. I'll explain to the best of my capabilities. After I hit my book with my hammer and went fallen through into this red space... Um, I can't. It was kind of like static. It was a weird atmosphere, and uh, there was a person in a distance. I didn't have, didn't know where I was, and had no ability to get myself back. So I called out to him. I didn't know the wizard king's name, which is Magda, and he told me who he was, and it just straight in my head. Never heard of him. Didn't know him. No, not seen the Wizard King before this moment. He then invites me into what he called his own pocket dimension. And we spoke. We had some food. I didn't tell him anything about Erebus. I, uh, I only told him I was with a party and we was looking to go towards the horizon. And that was it. And then he let me sleep. Then I charged my hammer and came running back into the fight without my clothes, as you <laughs> remember. <laughs> okay, so that's where you disappeared off to. And you cut back to her and she's got like a half-open mouth and a finger in the air as if she was going to ask about three different questions at once. Um, <laughs> and she kind of like closes her mouth and like puts her hand down into like a fist and she says, You ate from my father's table. Yeah. Steak and juice. They're nice. Then he can track you. Ah. <laughs> I just imagine he's sort of being sat there with like talking and like Oh like a shocked Oh okay. <laughs> and she says anything made by him or even indeed myself we could trace our own magical signature while it was still in effect, of course. So, in effect, I helped save you because he tracked me to you where you, you were being strangled. I don't think there's anywhere I could go. My father wouldn't find me. Ah. He did make me, after all. And she kind of smirks. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. <laughs> what woman <laughs> would love the Wizard King? I thought you said magic, though. But yeah, did he use magic <laughs> to make you? What woman would love the Wizard King, indeed? Yeah, then, well, you could put. <laughs> she turns back to the uh, the group and she kind of shudders and straightens her back up a bit on the couch, like kind of cushions that she's sitting on. She says, "I won't be able to hold this privacy much longer." However, and then she kind of like deep, kind of deep breath in. I don't willingly rush in to a confrontation with my father. Of that, I have no doubt I would lose. However, if we can find evidence that he is not keeping the interests of the kingdom, we could depose him. How would we go about that? She kind of laughs very loudly, like a big belly laugh. And she kind of goes, very carefully. Carefully. And she kind of nods. And then um, she says, we must move in plain sight, looking like allies. However, 
I will not make a move against my father if there is no evidence to support any foul play. He, in fact, does not need or feel the need to explain his actions to anyone he considers beneath him. She presumes just about everyone. I'm yet to meet someone he thinks of as above him. And she smirks mm -hmm. again at that. Um, he did look down on me. But then again, I'm yeah, not we all look down on you, but that's the <laughs> way. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> Do I have any profiteroles? <laughs> I don't want to look at all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I just stuff them all in my face. <laughs> she, um, she raises a hand kind of between like, kind of the group and she says, However, someone looked up to you and she gestures to the hammer. The the task at hand will be difficult, but I will do what I can to assist. However, you must be aware that once this meeting is over we will part ways and it will seem like our business has concluded. Understand. I, as I said, cannot be seen to be making moves against the kingdom. I am the people's princess for the kingdom. So, if I am seen taking any action against my father, that would be used against me, and I would lose my ability to help, including my ability to help the citadel. Yeah, we're on our own, but we can count on you when the time comes, I presume. Yeah. I will be there in ways I can be. And she kind of like nods slowly and she says, As for the abyss, I think it's having an effect on the kingdom, and I believe it is not limited to the surrounding area of the abyss. I think whatever has punched a hole through to our world. I think there are other holes being punched through elsewhere. I don't Is know. Is there a way to seal us? These holes? She kind of like, that's what we will hopefully discover together. This is what we will do to protect the kingdom. We will all go. And she gestures to like the group, obviously clearly excluding herself. And we will investigate these sites and we will do our best to seal them or keep them closed. These are weaker areas of the world where barriers are thinner, easily broken. Um, she kind of like, you can see her thinking for a moment. She says, um, this will be dangerous, and I cannot guarantee that you would survive even the cover story of our actions, never mind being outed to my father. I hope you don't undertake this task lightly. Yeah. And she kind of like turns back to you and she says, uh, that's to you, Reach. And she says, as for this hooded woman you spoke of, Celeste, what is she to you? Someone who stole me is my life. Yeah. Uh, good question, though. Just, yeah, <laughs> a friend of the gold worm, and I would guess a very ancient lady who, like I say, can travel places we can't and knows things we don't. That's so someone we trust. You trust her? Mm. Yeah, well, she wants you to take this powerful weapon. And take it where? How, how do you know she won't use it against, like, us? Doesn't matter. As if you're talking, we just don't want the Wizard King to use it. 
Why don't we just get rid of the weapon? Well, you had your chance. <laughs> yeah, that's before I knew how dangerous it was. She kind of like, she looks at you again, Eric, and she's like, and how dangerous is this child? From what I've seen, he could possibly be a catastrophe waiting to happen. He possibly has a catastrophe already happened. And then she kind of like motions to the map that's now on the table. And she kind of motions to like the abyss. The kind of like crevasse and she goes, You said this split open. Am I correct? She looks at Arya. You might be muted, Arya. Arya. <laughs> there we go. Yep. So she looks at you when she's pointed at the the abyss on the map and says, "You said this is split open, did you not?" I'm hearing you all weird, weirdly now, I don't know what's going on. You hear me now? One sec. Please stand by. It died. Hello. That's kind of what I was doing, I was trying to figure out how to fix the issue. You hear me now? Yeah, but I wasn't feel hearing you guys That's okay, for like as long as I know you hear me now, I can repeat. So. Sh Art, like um, Justoria says, she gestures to the map that's on the table, points to the abyss, and says, you told me this split open, did you not? Split, as in the split. The abyss. Yeah. But, the thing is, if I remember correctly, and this is me, out of character, we knew there was something wrong there, but we didn't really know exactly what had happened. Yeah, the gold worm we just saw said that there was a disturbance the there. Cultists. Yeah, yeah, we just saw those those cultists raise this like demon-like thing from the dead. So is that the split open that that that, that we're referencing here? I'm I'm a bit confused as to. Well, I think more accurately, is that the split you referenced? when you told your story about it, which I think oh, it would oh, be. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that would have been mm -hmm. it, Because nah. keep in For mind, you saw that open in a vision that Celeste gave you, way back at the start of the game. You just didn't see oh. how it opened, you just saw a tear in space and lots of things climb out. Oh, okay, 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 connect the dots now. Yep. And then uh, you went to the abyss, sorry. and then obviously you saw weird cultists, random wizard man, um, weird chained creatures with wings, killed. Yeah, yeah. Big portal. But that was just the one thing that climbed out, right? The... Yeah, one big fiery boy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I've not made the connection because, you know, a lot of things climbing out of, mm -hmm. well, essentially hell, one thing climbing out of hell, I generally had not made that connection. Okay, cool. Yes, mind equal blown. <laughs> okay, yeah. Right, so uh, what's your reaction, Tarlin? So let's rephrase that scene then. She like has the map appear on the table again and she says, and I believe you said the abyss has split open. So, to be honest, I would probably be a bit lost as to exactly what to do right now. Um, but we would definitely see this as a, as a sign that that vision that we saw from Celeste is starting to, to materialize. It's becoming not just a vision, but a, a, a reality that can become much, much worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. So we'd be wanting to do anything possible to to prevent that from happening, to prevent the the image that I saw with a lot of things um, coming out of that that breach. Um, 
So at the moment, I think what we would want to do is to. Oh goodness, we have to like, we we have to rush towards the. The great golden worm. See if we have some sort of direct confirmation that he is aware and helping Gil. Yeah, because he's kind of did just leave Gil there, you know, fighting. Yeah, no, I I've totally <laughs> not made that connection at all. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So how much are you going to tell just yeah, I mean, as a group as well? Because keep in mind, in light in light of this, like you know, Aram was being with the the king. Mm -hmm. Remember the cultists also said for the king. Yeah, for the king. That's what the cultists said. Which king? We'll never know, but that's what they said. The witch king. <laughs> the witch king. <laughs> 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 Not in this series. <laughs> no man can kill him. Eremos, I am no man. I am a spear. <laughs> 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 Just runs in the head, but some <laughs> <laughs> dies instantly. Crumbar sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. No. So I'm. I'm like breakthrough moment here. Yes. Okay. So. Um. In that case, knowing that she wants to essentially undermine her father, I would be more than happy to give her all the information I have. I'll, I'll be telling her about my vision and obviously connecting that to the to what we've saw seen in the abyss and what those cultists said and raise that as a as a as, as a concern of, of ours and also express my rush towards contacting the the great golden worm because it's possible like we've seen that she can't really do much well that her father is obviously stronger than she is mm -hmm. so but the great golden worm would be able might be able to help mm -hmm. so i think that just completely and utterly from my point of view at least changes the game and what we what I would want us to do right now, like I'd probably be want to be on the first boat to Hagen. Hagen, yeah, that's the town. He's that's that's where Eric's from. Oh, <laughs> Clara Hagen, be home. But yeah, I think as well, like you've also got your. I see what's in play, right? So Celeste said, "Here's your vision. I don't want this to happen." Please help me stop this happening. I think the exact thing she said to you, Arya, as well was, some things are natural. This is unnatural. Don't let this unnatural thing happen. This is bad. Let's get the weapon out of the hands of those who would abuse it. Obviously, she didn't realise who Crumbar was at the time, so that's maybe on her. But, fast forwarding past that, you've got this 10-year-old kid that you have decided is the weapon. Right, because there's been no evidence of it actually a weapon. being. Yeah, right. Like, I mean, Ermos so far has punched Crumbar and punched some trees quite well. Um, just maybe a slow burner, you know. Uh, he couldn't see in the dark either. That seems fine. I don't think many spears can see. Um, and well, I mean, who knows? Crumb might be right all along, and something needs to flip the switch in there. Also, he does end up being with the power. We can't do that. And then, if the Wizard King can track his own magic, and he has made Ermos, then he knew where he was the whole time. Which means, her concerns, Justoria's concerns about use taking the weapon to the abyss might be valid given that use might be directly responsible for that if Eremos's presence had anything to do with the abyssal breach and then never mind all the fact that you've left Gil fighting for potentially two months and a week which is probably exhausting Probably dead. Yeah, which means what else has come through in that time? They're the smaller ones because they're too scared to come through while he was there. 
Send the big one first, then the little ones, the smarter ones, second. <laughs> um, but yeah, so as that kind of hits over these heads, right? Obviously, Justoria isn't able to keep this privacy bubble up much longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you like to say in retort to that then? Like, what would you like to loop her in on? I would propose that we head towards Glitterhagen immediately to inform the great golden worm of everything and try to speak to him in person. We don't know he's there. The only reason why we're going over there is to go speak to Commander Slalbas. Yeah, but that's our closest contact to the great gold worm at the moment, so... Mm. Yeah, no. so, mm, yeah. Depends if you want to go back to the abyss. Yeah. <laughs> Probably don't want to go back to the abyss. Not in a rush. Nah. Not for another five levels or so. Alright, I've got a chapter titled that, don't worry. It's called The Return. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, return of the Witch King. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Return of the Mac, but you haven't met that the Mac yet, so. <laughs> we're, we're, still a bit, we're still in a fellowship stage. We've got to find the two towers first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So, she's looking there, she's in that kind of narrative, paused moment as you all kind of look at each other, and who decides to break the sugar bowl, as it were? That'll be a waste of sugar. Mm -hmm. Are we just not looping her in any of this? Are you going to keep all this between yourselves? I thought we did tell her. Uh, uh. I mean, so far you haven't told her anything yet. You have discussed what you might tell her as players. But no one's actually actively spoke back to her. I, we've told her about the abyss. We've told her that Satdale needs help. And mm -hmm. She's agreed to that. And, yep. uh, she doesn't know that Gil uh, was left fighting a there. monster for two months. He's yeah. never... You don't really don't need... Really... Yeah, you don't really need to tell her about the fact that two months has passed because she's pretty aware of that because she was tracking magic that was happening yeah. all over the place. Um, so that's not really that big a detail, really, um, for as far as she's concerned. But she knows none of the, the finer details that you guys know. She literally knows you guys appeared up north in the bitter wood and then random shit happened and then you just randomly went down south in a boat. Something weirdly magical happened in the sea. And then all that stuff at the abyss. Can we tell her that the gold, the gold worm sent us? Uh, I don't know if you've said that to her either. I don't think so. Because it would only be Arya, yeah. It was Celeste or whatever, but yeah. Mm -hmm. maybe. But you've I'll be happy to tell her everything basically at this point. Yeah. Yeah. You just spend some time just downloading. Is there, put it this way, yeah. right? We can, we can skip you having to repeat everything you remember. But is there anything you're not wanting to tell her? Let's put it that way. That's a more uh, easy way to edit this. We don't want to say a big kill in the I mean, King's Men. <laughs> yeah, the must. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's not mention that we killed the King's Men. Great reason. Yeah, let's not, remember, let's not mention that, that you guys have found happen. the kid. Mm. You don't even know, Eric. What was that? Sorry, so they were dressed as bandits. They weren't in yeah. like wasn't obvious. Whoever, but yeah. no. I don't know if that makes it okay. That, yeah. you know, I'm still going to keep that quiet myself. Mm -hmm. Feel free, but I wasn't there. I I wash my hands of this. In that river, we also put the bodies in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sign of an innocent man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I think we're happy to tell her everything, especially the ship and so on, and and the abyss and what happened in the abyss and so on. Yeah. Going to tell her Everyone, about the, the kind of pirates at the sea as well. Yeah, yeah, the sea, aye, the ship, aye, that, that's what I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other objections or omissions that you want to add? No. What about Dane Valfiel and Eric's amazing adventures through the Citadel? I'm, I'm not saying much about my um, contacts with certain agents. I feel like that's unneeded. James Bond. 
Okay, that makes sense. Um, right. So yeah, we'll just omit the part where you just murdered the Kingsman, and <laughs> we'll catch her up on the rest. Cool. Um, so she, I think, with that, does look concerned at everything you've told her, and she says, um, "This could still be an elaborate." design of my father's. He is very fond of playing games larger than most people can perceive. However, this all could be a misunderstanding due to his lack of um, clarity with his subjects. And she looks at everyone because she's reminding you all that you are still subjects of the kingdom. <laughs> um, Maybe with one exception, maybe. Ahem. And then she kind of nods and she says, Is there anything else I need to know? And, and you can see, like, you can clearly see, like, she's struggling um, to hold this, this spell. Like, it actually now is harder for her to even, like, have the, the veneer on her face. You know, the everything's fine and look at how good this is. Mm. So yeah, anything else? Is all good. Uh, if nobody else wants to share any yeah, last-minute secrets. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. Cool. Grumbar, you good too? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Grumbar. So, uh, good, good, good. Um, also, remember she stopped him speaking before, so that's why he's quiet. Um, magically. And then she kind of just like does that thing where she kind of like buckles over in two, holding her stomach as her like hand kind of goes dead by her side. Um, and then the magic kind of fails and like the the crystal room kind of like cracks and like shimmers and vibrates back into like the the form of the room it had before. Anyone looking at it probably gets a bit nauseous. Um, it's probably very uncomfortable to look at. Um, and then as if the room had always been that way, you're back in that kind of circular study. Which was in before that kind of smell of like spice comes back in. Um, and then you can just see her like kind of holding her wrist and gently kind of caressing her like left hand. Um, and she says, "We should get to work planning our investigations." And she gives everyone a knowing look. And then she brings up the map. I'd be nodding my head at her. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so she brings up the map. Right, as you know, Horizon is here. Okay, a mere 55 feet away from the capital. What? Stone's throw? <laughs> uh, mm. Is it a stone's throw? I think a stone is maybe only 20 feet, unless it's a disadvantage throw, in which case you might be able to make Omen. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so she says that there are for lack of a better term, holes into hell opening up around the world. Okay? Oh. And let me get a pen and I'll, I'll just mark these and let's go for orange, shall we? Where are we? So. And where else are we? Right. Those are probably a terrible colour. But Yeah, because I don't actually see where you've written at all. That's okay. I, I see them. There's two very faded triangles. Let's see. I'll get a symbol. Yeah, so it'll be easier if I get a symbol. Something glowy, ideally. Ah, there's one. Right Let's see. What have I got that is super super obvious? Magic symbol, please. Magic. Let's just type that in and see what I get as a marker. Hmm. Yeah, we could just do this. So... Yeah, that looks more like a gateway to hell. Yeah. Mm. Right, so... Let me just change this. To Snap off. Yeah, there we go. So, you can see the the triangle now. Ah, there's another one. Right, cool, yeah. So, 
Yep, no, no expense per budget. So there are two that she indicates that have become obviously more active. She does mention that this is by the city of Axis. Okay, remember that's the independent city, the one in the volcano? Yeah. The one that's kind of run by dragons and dragon kin. Um, there are humans that live there as well. It is like, you know, there are mixed races, but primarily dragons rule that, and we know how the Wizard King feels about dragons. So, well, there's that one, which might be a bit more dodgy because then you maybe have to explain yourself to Axis. Or there's the one that's in the place called, this area here is called the Direwood. Obviously, that's a great name. Sounds um, really friendly, yeah. So, yeah. We're going to get stuck in a dire situation down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like mostly just having to listen to Callum's puns. Um, <laughs> but obviously the problem with that one is that one's the more active one given proximity to the abyss. But then will the situation just get worse if you went to the other one first? So That's what she indicates on the map. And she says, these are the two I would recommend investigating first to see what we're dealing with. At the moment, I would prefer to send some assistance to the Golden Citadel, even if only cosmetically, so I can gauge the abyssal breach for myself under the guise of aid. And she kind of looks at you, Reach, to see if that would be uh, satisfactory to your request. Uh, satisfactory. To be fair, any help would be welcome, so yeah. Yes, I think I have to find out how bad the Abyssal Breach has become. Even if it means I lose... And she kind of just thinks to herself a bit, chat. Even if I lose people to get this information, the sacrifice may in fact be worth it in the end. Um, whereas if I have you investigating these hell holes for me, we can at least try and make sure the incursions do not appear elsewhere. However, if this is machinations of my father, he will interfere. And she kind of stops herself, as if forgetting. Obviously the privacy thing isn't up anymore. And she says, but of course mm -hmm. my father has the best interests of the kingdom at heart. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> However, I suggest you select one of these locations, investigate, and report back as quickly as you can. And then she uh, looks at Arya, and she kind of pulls up her sleeve, and she's got like a bracelet on that just has little random, like, almost like a lucky gem type charm type things on it. Just random ass stuff. Um, one of them looks like a kind of a bluish coloured shell. One's like a nail with another nail looped through it. Um, random little trinkets on this bracelet. She takes it off and she offers it to you, Arya. Assuming you're still with us and you're not muted. Maybe. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No. Your last like six or seven words there just disappeared, and I thought you just took a pause. Sorry. Um, I nod my head and take it from her and thank her and put it on my own hand, on my own yep. wrist. She says, If you are in trouble, it will allow me to either send help or retrieve you. However, it will only be useful once. 
So if you're going to kind of put, I don't know, just store your trinket bracelet on your inventory somewhere, you can do so. Oh yeah, I'll do that. Yep. Uh, and that's for you. So then a... Uh, cool. Kind of stands up and goes off to the kind of random cupboard thing that was, definitely wasn't there before. And she opens it up and she kind of brings out what looks like a, kind of, a big kind of silver tree. And she lifts out and it's got very familiar looking bottles on it. She sits down and places the tray on the table and they're like, I don't know, maybe about the size of a coke bottle, you know, um, but they're all kind of like blue crystal with um, like a kind of purpley violet stopper, crystal stopper in the ends of them and they have this kind of strange purplish liquid inside them and she says, please everyone take one and if you all want to add to your inventory a potion of long rest. Oh. And literally just type it in because these things don't exist. Okay. I'll type it up at the moment. Potion. How heavy? Same as a potion of healing? Uh, no, this doesn't weigh anything. Awesome. Pretty much that is the only text you really need to worry about. As we had mentioned previously, you can't benefit from a long rest within like twice in 24 hours. That's just the same deal with these. Okay. But these are an action to drink as opposed to eight hours. Hours to spend, yeah. Mm -hmm. So everybody gets one of those. And just dump this on crumb bar sheet so I remember that. That's so this is like the magic version of a really freaking cool energy drink, right? Basically it's a kind of monster, yeah. Like and other such energy drinks are available too. It's a monster, probably not the best description in an RP game. That, yeah. Yeah. that kind of monster, open it, <laughs> drink it! <laughs> I would say it makes you more relentless. You, you could say that, yeah. You oh. could, I would never say that, but you could say that if you were. If you were Probably would. If you were such a monster. Um, <laughs> no, I'm you, a rock star. Yeah, of course you are. Here we go. Here we go. This is what you get for drinking coffee. Right, I've added this one to Crumbar Sheet as well. It's in his treasure section, so if I don't remember, Scott, that's on you. Um, but yeah, she says, I only wish I could do more for the journey ahead. However, my my actions are restricted given my position. And she kinda nods solemnly at that. Kinda still rubbing her kind of like a wrist as if it's still in pain. And uh, she says You are welcome to spend the evening. I will have rooms prepared for you all. However I would recommend we cut our ties here. Yeah, and we want to start head off early in the morning as well, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. And she kind of stands up, kind of clasps her hand and she says, May I say it was an absolute delight? And she smiles calmly. Welcome wasn't so great. The hospitality has been exceptional. Thank you. <laughs> and she just kind of smiles and then um, she kind of just stands there waiting for everybody to leave the room. The doors open right. into the corridor. <laughs> Off we go. Off I go anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I it? trail behind. I'm the last one who doesn't leave. Uh, ha. Funny, because I wanted to be the last one to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you stood there like awkwardly, sort of not shuffling towards the door, asshole. Right, so if you were both standing there, right, everybody else like heads off into the corridor. Obviously, Crumbar goes just straight after Reach because that's what he would do. There would be no way he would cause any distractions or disruptions. He would just go. And um, yeah, obviously, I assume Arya would follow them as well. And then, yeah, yeah we're left with uh, you two in the room. And then she says, do we have something more to discuss? And she looks at both of you. I was going to ask you a favour. 
and then she kind of like almost as if she's acknowledged that you've said that and then she turns to uh, Kitty as if I've heard what he wants what do you want but she doesn't say that she just looks at you smiling <laughs> I was hoping you'd be able to help me with this and like just points ge like gestures to up and down myself like yeah and she kind of like looks at it and she goes new clothes of course and then just nods once <laughs> and then she um, she points at a door just to the side which is not the big double doors in and out of here it's a door that definitely was not here before she says if one of you would like to wait in there I will speak to you both privately I, I'm like oh, okay and I'll shuffle off and go stand in the cupboard <laughs> <laughs> where you belong so you walk through the door and then you open like the kind of single door, walk in, and then double doors close behind you, and you're in the exact same room, only nobody's in there. Okay? Oh, I hate this place. <laughs> and then, behind the desk, you notice, Justoria's there, wearing like a cyan blue outfit. Not the purple one she was wearing in the previous room, or the orange one, who knows what she was wearing. <laughs> and then she says, <laughs> please take a seat, and then there's a seat in front of the desk that wasn't there. <laughs> I'm just gonna okay. be doing that SpongeBob man <laughs> moment. Like, wait, wait a minute. Wait, what? Huh? Huh? And then we stay in the room that you just <laughs> left. And Eric, you're there. Justoria then like closes the two double doors, um, with handles that clearly weren't there before that are now gone. And then she motions to the like uh, the seating. Says, "Would you like to sit for this request, or would you like to stand?" I'll, I'll sit. It's a bit. It's a bit of a touchy subject. And then she sits down across from you. I, I need help locating my parents. I don't know who else to ask for. I haven't seen any clues that would tell me of the whereabouts. Is there anything you could do to help me? And she kind of like looks kind of down at her wrist and she starts to um She's kind of like absent mind blue, just kind of like rubbing the back of her hand. And then she says, I probably could help you find your parents. We would need some personal effects of theirs. Something they either wore or spent a lot of time with. Something. And she kind of like waves one of her hands, kind of absent mind blue in the air. Something charged with them. She looks at you as if you know what you mean, like she means. I look down at my hand and remove the signet ring of the, my arcane focus more or less, and just put it in front of me and go, they gave me this at an early age. Will this help? And she kind of looks at it and she looks back at you and she says, unfortunately this would let me find you. Huh. It would need to be something of theirs. Something they, have, they did not give away. I'd have to go back to Glitterhagen and search their room. If you could find an object to one or both of them, two objects, anything I could use, I could attempt to seek them out. And I would happily do so, given the assistance you're willing to give me in sealing these hell holes. Okay, thank you. I'll return when I find something that was theirs. She kind of like nods, and then as this conversation's happening, Kitty, did you take a seat? Yes, eventually. Yep. So, like, as soon as he's trying yeah. to open the door that obviously is not there anymore, I'll just like <laughs> peek out and see if, you know, she's still mm -hmm. in the other room. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so the double doors don't obviously have handles on them that are to your back. And then yeah. she just motions to the seat at the other side of her desk and you go and you eventually sit down. And then she kinda of does that thing where she just absent mindedly puts her hand open, palm up, to like on the desk. And I don't know mm. if you just like absent mindedly put your hand in her palm or whatever, but <laughs> yeah. it kinda of feels like that's what she's after happening. Yeah, and then she kinda of just like yeah. starts to like caress your your kind of paw, as it were. And then she's and how can I help you? Well, this isn't my true form. Um, I I was a wizard's apprentice when I was young, um, 
and I was full of myself, to put it bluntly. I thought I knew everything, um, and I thought I would try this really advanced technique, and it backfired. I turned into a, an actual domestic cat. Um, when I managed to come, like, tell my master what had happened, sort of in the form of, as a cat can, um, he just laughed and said, it'll teach me right, and left me to it. So I thought, I'm not having that. I will. I was knocking potions into the bowl, and, well, this happened. So. I see. Yeah. So you're caught halfway between who you were and what you were made into. Yeah. And she kind of, kind of chuckles to herself a little, and she says, Confidence is very useful when working with magic. However, as you have seen, arrogance is not. No. And she kind of smiles, kind of pats your kind of paw, kind of very, maybe slightly patronizingly. And she sits <laughs> back up and she says, How patient are you? Well, I've been like this for about 20, 25 years. I, I can wait longer, but I'd rather not, if possible. I've gotten used to this form. This may be violent. Will it be painful? And she kind of looks almost like she's about to break really bad news to someone. <laughs> and she says, Yes, this would be incredibly painful. I am undoing someone else's magical works, and while I don't think it would pose a problem to undo, I also need to make you aware that it would be my force of will ripping apart someone else's. I just sort of nod my head solemnly like, yep. Yeah. That's probably what I deserve. <laughs> and then she kind of just says, If you are sure, we can begin. If you wish time to think on this, I have asked you a great deal. I would happily do this for you. Then we put GM brackets in and you're totally spending that story point if you want this to happen. Yes, please. And then we're hiding that. I just sort of... I'd, I'd been sitting sort of in my palms, like paws together in my lap, sort of looking down. And when she says we can do it now, I'm like, ears perk up, eyes wide, like, yes, please. <laughs> like, there's going to be pain, but yes, please. <laughs> and then she says, please take a step back. Do I just suddenly fall on my ass because, like, I was sat down? <laughs> yeah, like, you can just step back into the room that's obviously got space for you to step back into. We cut back to a. Eric and her and then she sat across and says was there anything else I could assist you with today Lord Eric can you help me understand how to break my bond I asked your father but he gave me limited information you speak of the mother of sorcery yeah and she kind of um, she kind of looks back to her wrist, and she's starting to like caress again. She's like, no, that's beyond me. Do you know of a way to break it? I think your choice of words may be misplaced. Breaking is unlikely. Undoing would be what I would use. You wish to fulfill or supplant the bond you have. You cannot break it. You would need to go against the mother of sorcery herself to break that. And I consider myself a sorceress. And she just looks at you dead in the eyes with that as if take the hint. <laughs> okay. Is there any, like, what is Eric's kind of reply to that? Because she's basically went, nope. <laughs> um. And she's basically said, this might be beyond me. Stares directly into your eyes. <laughs> I 
don't know who she's trying to like. She... <laughs> <laughs> she's like trying to say, "You can do it," or whether she's trying to say that uh, she will won't do it in case the mother is watching. Hmm. Well, she has said she can't do it, so yeah, you would need to maybe go deal with the source of that problem. So I need to go speak to the blue, big blue dragon. Is all I hear. If that's what Eric hears, that's what Eric hears. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, "I am sorry, I cannot assist in that endeavor. However, if you can source those items personal to your parents, I shall endeavor." to give you some direction. Thank you. That's all I can ask for. And she kind of smiles. And she kind of stands up and clasps her hands. Like, kind of, slightly abruptly. Almost like a clap. Cool. I'll stand up and put my ring back on. I don't want to forget that. Mm -hmm. We're just assuming and you've been I fully guess. clothed this whole time as well, because I think you have been. <laughs> and then you'll leave yes. um, by the double doors. Yeah. I say, I say thank you and bye. Okay, perfect. She kind of smiles. Um, and then she, uh, we click back to Kitty taking a step back with the, you know, clearly one and only Justoria. And <laughs> um, she goes and she stands up from behind the desk and the desk kind of melds away as if it wasn't there. Um, and she walks towards you. And then she says... She's very close to you. She might be only like half a foot away from you now. And she is, she's quite tall because you're quite short as well. So she stands maybe about 5'11". And she's also in, yeah. you know, decent heels. So mm. she's maybe about 6'2 at the moment. And she looks at you and she says, You are sure? I hesitate, but ultimately nod my head yes. I'm ready. And then she kind of lifts a finger with her right hand and she says I hope this is what you're looking for and she touches you on the forehead and from our perspective it does that kind of matrix camera spin slightly round to the side so we see side on and maybe we just hear one meow as all of Kitty explodes <laughs> Bye. and all the pieces kind That's of not a good thing. all the pieces kind of like freeze midair one profiteral too much but <laughs> all the golden <laughs> armor stuff falls off there's just piles and piles of gold stuff um, <laughs> half of her belongings are in there as well <laughs> It's um, like you've tipped a niffler upside down and it's just like got the whole jewelry store in there. Yep. Um, but I'd like, like to think the story of space is just like... That's huh. my vase! Um, Where is this all hidden? But yeah, so we have like... We've got like the bones, we've got like the, kind of the meat and the flesh and the kind of sinew, we've got... Like, even like your eyes are there and like the lenses are all like, like split apart and such. Um, you've got all this kind of cyan and purple light coursing between all the parts as if it's still knitting it together and then it's slowly pulling it all back into like a rough humanoid shape and as that's all happening the, cam the camera cuts to like you know Justoria's back with all this kind of cyan and purple light coming from in front of her um, and all the parts of Kitty kind of flying back together but maybe not quite as we know it or knew it and uh, yeah I think we cut to the the rooms that are prepared for you guys um it is one kind of big room that is like again you've got almost like veiled curtains that can be pulled over to kind of segment it all again there's that kind of hot spicy kind of smell coming from like in a fire pit in the middle of the room there's lots of pillow throws and such everywhere um kind of looks a bit like a harem den um or like a hookah den and within there You've got like your own individual kind of like privacy curtains for your own beds. Um, I guess Eric walks in and Reach and Arya and uh, Crumbar are already there. But he was notably delayed by like five minutes, see? Hmm. 
Uh, hello, Eric. Uh, deal with the wizard king didn't work. Trying his daughter now. <laughs> also, his eyes are glowing blue, right? So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've discussed a few things, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah. What about Arya? Arya is very quiet. What she, what she got to say about all this uh, new direction, shall we say? I'd um, I'd, be, I'd be looking at them like you know, up and down. <laughs> um, be like, is your armor gonna fit now? Wait, what? Remember, it's only Arya can do. Eric, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, I thought it was both of them. No. Nope. At the moment, Arya's oh, uh, Kitty's God. armor definitely doesn't fit. No, Kitty's <laughs> armor is perhaps atomized. I, I, was, I thought that was going to be the fun bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, Eric is definitely not the fun bit. <laughs> Tee -hee. Mm, but, 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 exploding kittens. That was the fun bit. Yep, exploding kittens. <laughs> 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 like I'm, I'm not that impressed with uh, everything else. I'm, I'm like saving my kid, my reaction for the exploding kitten. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Not impressed. Oh. Oh. No, what I'm saying is like <laughs> I am no, 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 like, it now. like oh, okay, that happens. But like you know. The, the the cat changes would probably be a bit more like what the you were a cat why you you're not a cat why you sound like kitty but well, you don't know that yet mm. yeah you have no idea it's happening yeah so at the moment it's just Eric that was delayed and has walked in the room there is still no sign of kitty So I guess the only thing really would be, does Arya want to have any kind of conversations with Eric and Reach regarding anything specific to you three? Um, or I guess really anything else you want to bring up at the moment? Sons, Kitty? Mm. No, that's okay. Like, you, you don't need to have anything specific you want to say. Oh. Yeah. No. Okay. And I think um, probably a good couple of hours pass, actually. So what do you do to fill the time? Obviously, Kitty's getting further. The, this, uh, what's her name? The new wear, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> his name? Her name? Princessoria. Yep. The princess. Yeah. Yeah, the princess. Mm -hmm. Look, whatever she's got is obviously a lot more difficult than what I had to ask. Hmm. So, what have you been doing for two hours, Eric? What? What have you been doing for two hours? In this room, this very comfy, very spicy room. We're just relaxing, you know. Honestly, I don't feel like I have to say anything to impress anyone or anything. No, that's fine with me. Yeah, reach. How are you? Two hours, yeah. time to kill. Losing about. Mm -hmm. Going early morning. So. I think as well for um, Arya's benefit. Ruya would definitely be in this room as well, just given that, you know, you haven't had Ruya this entire time, but yet yeah, seems to be here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. I imagine the tour is for you is probably spent. If there's a Ruya, I would totally be like, you know, raising my arm, summoning her to it, and then just being all like, this is a good yet already. Mm hmm. But not that, you know, baby kids were just yeah. uh, catching Ruya up and everything that's happened, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, reach anything specific you want to do, downtime wise, or happy to just wait yeah. out the hours? Nothing, yeah. My oh. apprentice is not here, so. Yeah, I was going to say, I've got nobody to train at the moment, you know, without Crumbar's yeah. going to learn much, so. Um, yeah. I think he's not happy with how he thinks about it already. Um, and Crumbar is probably just, let's face it, asleep for lack of a better way of putting it. Or maybe just lying staring at the ceiling. Been like, how can a friend and a weapon be two different things? And then, um, 
Oh, um, Sophie, do you want to describe what walks in, maybe? Um, let's have a look. Whoop, whoop. That was some good timing. Oh, mm -hmm. that yeah. was really good timing. <laughs> yep, perfect. Yeah, it works for me. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, you're welcome to dump it in general chat if you want as well. I will. Uh, uh. Are we sisters? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you got more of a violet thing going on? You've got more of a, a kind of cyan -y blue. I know, I know, I know. I'm just joking. But yeah, I suppose uh, there isn't a million miles between you two. I'll just start saving this now. So at the moment we don't know it's her, right? So yeah, I'd be just, like, just women walked in. Mm-hmm. Sort of very slumped over, like I've got a massive hangover kind of feeling. Mm. <laughs> like, just make my way to the nearest bed and just freaking fall over onto it. <laughs> yeah, it's probably like, um, probably not the most graceful of walking either. So, I mean, it's nope. probably awkward as hell. <laughs> uh, just sort of dragging behind the, the bag of stuff that I had. <laughs> 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 um. Probably not helped. <laughs> I've not paid attention to Kay walking and uh, all I yell from my bed, me looking up at the ceiling or whatever it is above us, <laughs> might be some weird magic clean. God right. knows. It's almost but, like kind of silks that are hung like from the corners of the room, so you actually can't see a ceiling, you just see like silks. Like cool. almost like blanketed. Yeah, silks. And uh, I just go, oh, it's Kitty walked in at last. Now here's the thing, does your voice sound different? It probably sounds a bit more elegant, <laughs> like because elves have that elegant way to them. Mm -hmm. Whereas Oops. when I was a cat, it was just quite mm -hmm. street, I guess. Is <laughs> yeah. probably uh, the commoner sort of thing, because you know you, you fit in with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I can't really. I don't really say much that you can understand. It's literally just into the pillow. Does <laughs> <laughs> uh, MD? Any question, this strange person who has walked in? Yeah, yeah, that'd be like, excuse me, who are you? Sort of... Who sent you here? Lift my head up, twist it to look at him, and just go, meow. <laughs> yeah. Kitty's dead, long live the cow. <laughs> 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 Is that you, Kitty? Yeah. Wait, so they made you human? Is your name still Kitty? Well. <laughs> you see an elf here poking out from between the hair. Not very visible on the picture that I found. <laughs> but it was a rush, okay. Giant, when I get a free giant, day, I'll... Giant I'll... elf. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hi. It's me. Night. And I just pass out. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take too too long for you guys to maybe piece together that. Mm, yeah. That sounds a bit like the way Kitty would say things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anything else anybody wants to add to that? Uh, okay, do we get a plate of food well, beside our bed? I probably have a lot of uh, curiosity, you know, curiosity about this, but like. I can obviously see when somebody's too tired to go into a story about what on earth happened, so I'll save my questioning for the next morning. <laughs> is, this to, like, is, it, is this to back up that statement? I just let out like a very sort of quiet snore, but it's like <laughs> sort of a purr sound as well, so you just sort of like, mm -hmm. is she really fully elf now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a bit of a kind of almost habits that won't necessarily go away straight away. Yeah. I think as well with that then you've got um like the full like time time passes round until what seems to be morning. The room seems to get that kind of morning sunlight, even though there are no windows to the room. Um almost as if the sunlight's creeping in through the blankets that are on the ceiling. Um 
and yeah, I guess everybody that slept got their full rest. Um, everybody can have the benefits of a long rest, which obviously I'm sure everyone's happy to to have here. Yep. Um, with that as well, <laughs> we'll, we'll add in the XP that you would have got from completing the goal that we'd be finding out what your story knows about Aramos, because I feel like you've done that as well. Yep. Uh, so that is an easy goal, use her level 4. Uh, so that is, what, 200 XP? That makes sense, right? Yeah. So uh, 5250 should be the total. So 5250, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I'll add that into Crumbles cool, cool. before I forget. Let's add that in just now. Two seconds. I have a Slipknot song in my head now, thank you. Uh, is there a, a reference I'm missing? Yeah, a Slipknot song? What's the song? I don't know. You said before I forget there. Made me. Yeah, it just got it straight into my head. Ah. So we've got 5250. I've added that to Crumbar Sheet as well. You're welcome, Scott. Um, I seem to be leveling him up myself, so. Um, <laughs> I think you've done more leveling up for him than he has. I think so. Um, it's just been unfortunate that you seem to get XP when he isn't here, weirdly. Um, mm. Then, <laughs> right, so it's morning. Who's up first? Me. I wake up and smack my head on the bunk bed. <laughs> yeah, because you're Ow. probably a bit taller. <laughs> Very ungraceful. That foot would wake me up. Who oh, would yeah. sleep on the top bunk of mine? <laughs> now, do, no, you just, do you sleep with your hammer now, Eric? Is that a thing you do? I sleep with my hammer, yes. It's very precious to me. Mm -hmm. okay. And I sleep with my book in the other hand as well. Okay. Currently, like, your only possessions, anyway. Yep. <laughs> I don't have anything else. You have I've a, forgotten the, it all. You've got that if one, I let go, I lose it. You've got that one potion as well now. Um, yep. Yeah. Should I just delete all my stuff in my back of that one potion? I mean, I don't have a crossbow no more. I don't have my bolts. I left them all of them in the Wizard King's pocket dimension. I need to go speak to him see if I can get. Actually, my stuff back. you left it all in the boat. Yeah, you I... could. I should have mentioned something to just store it. You know. <laughs> I thought you was looking after my bag. In all honesty. <laughs> I mean, I it's entirely possible I just stashed it with my stuff. I mean, I distinctly recall him moving his stuff away from the group, privately, <laughs> trying to charge the hammer. Then he went with the book and the hammer, off to a secret bit again from his previous secret bit, <laughs> to then hit the uh, the book with the hammer. So no, I think the only person that could probably have done anything with his stuff would have been Kitty. But given how much Kitty was carrying, I doubt she could carry any more. So, no, I literally am up the limit. <laughs> yeah, so the one person that could have carried more wouldn't have because she couldn't. <laughs> um, and mostly was doing that thing where she bolted back to England. Everybody, red thing, no Eric, book, <laughs> meow. <laughs> Pass out. So, yeah, there is, yeah, you, yeah, just delete it. That's probably the best thing to do. Let's just yep, pull the band it Yeah. Um, and we'll just deal with your lack of backpack in the future. Um, well, say for now, there's at least a pocket big enough for that uh, potion in your current yeah. ropes, um, which is fine. And we'll just go about getting you some new stuff as we go forward. Um, would that still be classed as fine clothes? It would be, right? Yeah, definitely. Some of the finest, you could say. Uh, right, so used to her up. Um, Unless anybody else wakes up with the thud of a kitty smacking her head off the air. <laughs> well, it depends who's no. asleep on uh, on the top bunk of mine, because like, if it was Aya, then they could probably wake up the burb. Well, because oh yeah. Walk. Keep in mind, you all have your own kind of like veiled, kind of cosy little blankety area to yourself. There's no bunk beds. It's also as it's a bit like. Silk partitions oh, so and such. My head on, then. <laughs> I don't know, just something that was wrapped in maybe like a silk sheet that you felt looked softer than it was when you hit yourself. It turns out, like, <laughs> maybe it's like some sort of oak banister to the bed. Just try not to hit it hard enough that it comes to life and starts an initiative. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're fighting your bed. <laughs> Stupid wild magic. 
Um, but yeah, so Eric, do you do anything when you wake up and look across and still see this strange woman? I kind of rub my eyes and go, Has, are you still Kitty? Or am I dreaming? I'm still me. I'm just more me. Words are hard. you? Ha. Huh. Are you still going to be called Kitty? Do you have a new name? It'll just, we'll just stick with Kitty for now. Just, that's what I've gotten used to. Ah, interesting. I, I don't know what to make of you not being a cat. I guess we'll have a normal party now? Question mark? <laughs> I'm just sort of started the edge of the bed, like looking at my arms, stretching my legs, sort of tap, tapping my head, like feeling my ears, like my elf ears, not cat ears. Yeah, because would you have scratched behind your cat ears with your back feet before? Like, I feel like I was too big of a cat to mm. have done that. Yeah. Like, it, it wouldn't have been an, a natural action for a five foot, whatever I was, mm -hmm. to have done. Yeah, it must but. be, like, super weird. Because, um, obviously, it isn't what you were used to for like 25 years yeah and then even before that it isn't exactly what you were before because obviously you've had 25 years of growth yeah since then. so I'm actually taller than I was mm -hmm. anyway which must be super weird well was... I haven't tried standing up yet so mm. <laughs> I mean I did walk in but that was more of like a hunched over and you were probably still a bit in shock practicing. from that yeah the yeah, it was more of a, a sleepwalk to the bed to rest kind of thing. Mm. So yeah, um, probably Arya and Reach wake up as well, I guess, given that they're talking. So. Yep, yep. Is there, um... We would. I mean, I think it's safe to say that I'd be like reacting to the noise around me because you know, I'm used to that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, with my background, but yeah. So that that would wake me up as well. Mm -hmm. well. I would say so, yeah. Probably relatively light sleepers, to be honest, given what you have been through. Um, yeah. Um, except Reach. Reach sleeps quite a lot. Yeah. Sometimes during fights. Oh, God. <laughs> um, but, yeah. um, any more questions for the, uh, the new girl? <laughs> How are you? Still healthy? Or... I think ready so. To, right, ready to go for another mission, another quest. Yeah, I guess we'll find out if we go. Okay. Nothing like finding out in the middle of danger. Yeah, cool. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> our, that's our entire philosophy right now, isn't it? Or yeah. way of life, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm very good with the words. Mm. It's actually right. funny because you have lost points in charisma, which I think is funny. Um, <laughs> I basically yeah. just lost brain cells. <laughs> I get gained some as well at the same time. It's yeah. like I I've more... lost them from the right side, but gained some in the left. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that your cat just like going, well, I used to be better at talking, but now I'm better at thinking about what I want to say, but not saying what I want to think. Hello, I'm still pretty. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I like that. Um, right, there is the, the map you've been given uh, by Gestoria in the centre of the room that used to be a fire pit, which is now a table full of breakfast. Because, you know, oh, hell yeah. magic. Um, and obviously there are two things circled on the map, those locations. Where to first? Right, we're going to go to the closest one first, that for then the place called the Direwood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the one near the Abyss and the Direwood, or the one near a... Uh, like, it's not really near Axis, it's quite a bit away from Axis, but at the yeah. same time, it might get the attention of the dragons. It depends on what you guys think you want to do. The one near the Abyss, probably a bit more dangerous, like just already said. One further away is near 
you know, dragons. I think the only other the downside would be that you would be letting the one near the abyss develop more as well. Yeah. But either way, one of them's going to have more time to develop given the time you're going to take to investigate one of them. So we could tackle the easier one. <laughs> what one's the and easier one again? <laughs> the other one, the one that's not close enough to the, the abyss. Do we know, judging what we know about dragons, as long as we don't bother them themselves, are they likely to be bothered by us being in the general area? Yeah, chromatic dragons don't like gold, and we've got a lot of gold as a party. They are not the chromatic don't dragons like that are in the... Are they not? No, it is a... For the most part, it's um, brass and bronze. Are There's a lot of those. Um, those are kind of very common, but the silver rules axis. The silver. <laughs> the weak one, because gold is better than silver, right? Well, I mean, running a city versus being a drag. god, like, mm, I feel like that you're doing okay, right? You're still doing okay. You're better than just you know. Your average schmo. But um, the silver would be considered less than the gold, given the gold is the great gold worm, and it's not the great silver worm. <laughs> um, if you of want, you course, could. There's no alteration there. If you wanted, Eric, you could always roll history to see how much you know about the silver. Yeah, let's do it. Yep, that seems about right. Yep. Um, I'd say you know that a dragon rules Axis kind of in part. There are there's a court of people in Axis that rule, and the silver sits atop of that court. And anything the silver disagrees with, well, the silver gets their way. Put it that way. I share this information with the party, so they now know. How do you share that? Because Arya sits up, she's pipes in with, I assume if we leave the dragons to them, they will leave us to us. Um, I say, well, the city is ruled by Big Silver Dragon, and there's kind of like a court style thing going there. Generally, uh, everything goes the silver's way, though. So, yeah, depends on how he feels, I suppose. So we've got a 50-50 chance of even reaching the other one, then. Because if it doesn't go his way, us going there, then we don't get there. We could just say that we're trying to lend a hand to him. He might take... Uh, also, anyone else that feels like they would know anything about Axis... If you can justify it to me, I'll give you a history roll as well. I look like a stone throw away, so... You got your roll. I'd expect I would Good know point. about dragons, full stop. Just because I would reckon in the Golden Order they talk about dragons, other ones. I mean... I'd say you've got enough to roll. I wouldn't say it gives you advantage because the only real dragon they talk about is the gold one. Gold one, yeah. But yeah. you can definitely roll history, yeah. yeah. History. Yeah, I can roll up. That's about all I can do. <laughs> um, there are dragons in Axis. Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, you also know that the Wizard King has never tried to lay claim to Axis. Doesn't even hint that it should be part of the kingdom. Uh, well, I know the Wizard King doesn't think much of Axis, but I don't know if that's in a good way or a bad way. Yeah. That's... Mm. Mm. Dragons are their own issue. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Kitty, how do you feel about dragons in Axis? Do you think you've got enough you need to get a roll of information, or are you are you clueless about Axis? Um, I mean, I grew up in a magical city. Well, but most of my time in a magical city. Um, I probably would have picked up things from like travelers and traders. Okay, um, yeah, 
good enough. Horizon is the city right next to it, so the very fact that Eric could roll means you should be able to roll, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So shall I roll a history? Would you get a history roll? Right. Woohoo! Oh. Not oh. bad. Not bad. Cyclopedic, let's see. <laughs> ah. Katie knows all the shit. <laughs> Uh, the silver is a female dragon. Let's just put that out there right now. Um, dragon with tits. <laughs> yeah, we're going south. <laughs> oh god, Eric, just never, <laughs> never, never speak. Um, uh, you've also heard the name of the silver dragon. Uh, let's see. There you go. I popped. Agatha. It. I popped it in the chat. Agatha. Agatha. Oh. I knew it. Agatha. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's Ag Atha. That's what I said. Yep, you can say it how you like, but you don't even know the name. You were calling it a guy, which is probably within your sphere. It's, it's a dragon. It's yeah. a dragon. He mm -hmm. or she, it. Because it just was a strong yeah. male dragon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Kitty, you know of Agatha, um, the silver. Um, you also know that she goes by the Song of Sorrow. Yeah. And that is um, almost like her title. Okay, so I tell the group it's Agatha. Mm -hmm. Agatha, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Agatha. Well done. <laughs> um, she is known as the Song of Sorrow. So, yeah. Happy, happy, fun, fun. Mm. I feel like I've got a hangover. <laughs> oh, you're saying all this through like rubbing your brows or something, just kind of shaking your yeah. head into your hand. Maybe scratching yourself when you don't mean to, given your sharp yeah. pointed <laughs> fingers, yeah. So, do we want to deal with demons and dragons or possible beasts and dragons? I imagine if the wood, the dialwood is filled with beasts. Um, Kitty, That's in fact, there, there's another thing. Kitty, do you want to give me a nature check? Because you were near enough. The tire yeah. Thing. Nature or survival. I actually don't mind which one you want to go for. And uh, Arya, you can do the same. Nature or survival. Probably more. Uh, it doesn't matter actually which one. Whatever one you want. And this is about the dire wood. I don't know why it's. Doing the it's the toggle switch in the top. Advantage at the top, yeah. It should be in the middle. It's a cool that. It's Normal. Not, I've, I've not got it. I've got it on my other sheet, but not on this one. That's okay. I'll fix that. I know exactly what's wrong with it. I'll go do that right this very second so that we can oh. just skip that. It's um, an NPC sheet. Oh. Uh, no, it's there's a setting I set for all of you when we made the sheets. Um, right. You go into the cog and then down here where it says. Where is it here? Roll queries, always roll advantage. We're changing that to advantage toggle. And then we're going to close that. Go back to core. You see the toggle switch now? Yay! There we go. I'd set that for everything sheets automatically. I just forgot to do it for Katie's second sheet because that phrase explains it. Then, <laughs> yeah, so we've got. Um, both of you have a think about the dire wood when Eric says, obviously, maybe beasties. Um, the 15 is enough, um, so Kitty and Arya both know nobody willingly goes to the Direwood unless it's to clear out existing problems. Um, the Direwood is pretty kind of gnarly. Um, some people go there to practice magics that are frowned upon because nobody's willing to go there. Thus, if nobody's willing to go to the scary place, you can be the scary thing in the scary place. Um, mm. Arya, you get a bit more information. Given everything that, you, given everything that you've discovered about the abyss up until now, you've probably pieced together that the reason the Direwood's so twisted and gnarled is because of its proximity to the abyss. So the creatures that may have once lived there peacefully have maybe a bit warped now. So yeah, maybe the abyss has seeped into the Direwood through the years. Mm. So okay. but like Sleeping Beauty meets Friday the thirteenth kind of thing. But, or yeah. Hellraiser. Yeah. yeah like exactly. Sleeping Beauty meets Hellraiser, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just to be a bit more like 
practical effects about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the thing, etc. Um, very John Carpenter. Let's put it that way. It's basically John Carpenter's woods. Um, so that's your choice that lays before you in the map. Um, and Arya, you're welcome to kind of lead the charge with the uh, discussion about what you think about Eric's suggestion. Do we go and risk dragons or beasts? Well, to be perfectly honest, neither is a good. Uh, well, you know, know that the, neither of them are going to be friends. <laughs> yeah, and the beasts are more likely to be warped abyssal things in the direwood rather than creatures yeah. that are like considered beasts, like say a cow, for example. It would be like mm. a weird warped abyssal cow. <laughs> Indeed, and oh, we've seen a little bit of what the abyss does to animals. To creatures, we don't even know what those were initially. Mm. Indeed. So how does Arya convey that to the group? Besides, neither seems to be friendly. But I think, for myself, for Arya, she would much rather fight creatures that are in a forest than creatures that are in the abyss. But that's just because of her, you know her background and she feels comfortable in the woods but at the same time I wouldn't really know which one to um, hedge towards I would just convey all the information that I know to the party and be like okay so what do we do do we vote do we decide do we what do we how do we make this decision so I have a case okay that I could make for one the top one we could go if we do meet dragons if we share to them the plight of what is happening at the abyss there's a possibility they may aid us not saying it's a hundred percent chance or anything but it, there's a chance they may help us with the next one uh, unless it's gold dragons yeah that does sound unlikely but that's uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll vote south anyway, if we're voting. Mine's the west one. Cool. That's one each. Uh, Arya? So I think you said, from what I gather, you want to fight things in the forest, which would be the south one? Is that right? Yes, yes. Okay. Kitty? I'm not too fussed. If the majority want to go, then I will follow. So, at the moment, you would make it a tie, which Crumbar would have to break. Or, uh -oh. you would pick the Direwood, in which case it would be uh, the Direwood. So it's up to you. Which one's closer? The Direwood is probably direwood. easier to get to, relatively. <laughs> Um, probably pick that one then, since we can get there quicker. Okay. Uh, so how does that conversation play out? So did Eric just randomly point to the map and then Eric sealed one out? Well, I'm sort of there looking through my inventory, by like, checking what I've actually got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I've got this, this, this. Are you guys are saying something? Oh, okay. Uh, what's the choices? Those two? Oh, okay, we'll go to this one then. And then go back to sorting my bag out. <laughs> I shake my head and go. There is no allies to be gained in the south one. In this one. Oh. Oh. Uh, take your time. Wait for your internet and try again. Oh. oh okay. So it's not mine. Nope. No. Mine's just going red as well. Don't know how you hear me. Yeah. Hear me. Okay. yeah. I think it's Discord. Let's give it a moment. Let's see if we can get Eric back. Here we go. Better? Yep. Yeah. Try that, that again. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Going to the south one, there's no allies to be gained. Like, if there is, there's been... Oh. No <laughs> users. Yeah. I've got the exact same right, so the there's no allies to be gained in the south. Continue. Yeah. What? And now it's back? Yep. Continue. What is this? 
<laughs> Stop ruining it. Just use it. <laughs> like. the, so we could go to the west one where we could get allies in dragons. Allies being very a, a loose term, but they may help us because this threat is a threat to everyone, not just us. We could make a strong case for them to come help us. And then we'd have a dragon. Okay, let's do that then. Uh, the other thing is, <laughs> if if we're going to be haggling over a, a help, that might take longer and delays further going to the other one, the south one. But a dragon is very powerful. Yeah, I know. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then, like, yeah, it might take us a while, but if we have a dragon with us, then you know, it's it's just more firepower. We can close it easier. It don't it won't take as much of a toll on us. Again, that's also assuming they come help us and not attack us on the way. But they could attack us on the way if we we clear the bottom one and we go to fight the west one. They could still attack us anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but we would have one fixed in the meantime. And, I mean, Arya does have that bracelet of, oh, shit. Yeah, I was about to say, we do have a get-out-of-jail-free card. And you do have a hammer of getting out of jail free as well, right? True, but I'd have to charge it, and that means I'd be uh, a bit tired. But, I mean, you're not exactly walking distance yet from these places, so True. you probably do have time to charge the hammer before you get there. You actually probably could charge the hammer and just take yourself there, but... Eh, good point. I could skip the <laughs> distance. So you could go solve one and then skip to the other if you were brave. Um, but then again, it just leaves you with the question, which one do you want to start with? True. All right, okay. If we are going to, uh, toward the Direwood, I need to go charge my hammer. So we have a get out of jail free card, like we can just get the hell out of Dodge if we use it. Are we going to die? Back here. We're at a stalemate. One, two. Are we at a stalemate? No, nope. we're not. We're going down south. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to tell you the opinion of me mm -hmm. going that way. Well, I think the votes do say Direwood. It um, doesn't even matter if Crumbar voted with Kitty. It's three against two. So I thought Kitty changed the vote. She did. She voted for, obviously, the, uh, what you call it, the west one. Yeah. And then you're voting for the south now. I mean, no, but I said if we are, I still need to go do it anyway. Mm. If, you, if you guys want to continue speaking about it, sure, but I need to go charge this hammer. Like, if if you three want to go to the would I will, you four, sorry, come back somewhere, probably still sleeping. Then I will still go to Diewood with you, but that was my two cents. Yeah, I think Crumbar is just lying on the bed, staring at the ceiling with his like hands clasped over his chest, with his two thumbs pressed up against each other, just staring at the ceiling, clearly in deep contemplation. <laughs> Where's his jug? It doesn't matter where his jug is. I feel like he'd be drinking that when a tough decision comes to him. To be fair, see, I think the fairest thing is just to roll the dice, mm -hmm. odds and evens. Yeah. It's up to you. How you used to say this entirely up to you. I just need to know which one I'm writing about. <laughs> um, uh, Arya, Eric, what do you think? So, I think Arya wants the south, you want the south, I think. Um, Kitty said yeah. west, and Eric, you haven't really actually clarified what you want. I think you said west, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I said west, that's why I'm fighting that point. Okay, cool. Uh, with a lack of crumbar, we will roll, I guess, for Crumbar? I think that's fair. Yeah, that is actually fair. Um, yeah. 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 And Do you want to roll then, GM? Uh, yeah, I'll for roll for him. We'll it's an NPC, yeah. Yeah, so, what will we roll? We'll roll... Odds, west, even, south. Right, his wisdom is a zero, right? So we'll roll his wisdom, and I think... Anybody surprised? <laughs> 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 <Okay>. <laughs> right, what would you care about? I am surprised it's not a minus. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 Probably his intelligence. I'm quietly impressed. <laughs> Let's not talk about his stats too loudly. Um, uh. <laughs> so, also he needs to remember that he has a long rest as well. I need to remember and tell him that. Yeah. Um, even if he did stare in dread at the ceiling. So, yeah. Let's see. Odds for west. Evens for south. Right? Sounds good, yeah. Odds west, even south. Every dice works for that as well. Yeah, cool. There we go then. See, we're going south. Yep, I'll just put it in from bars. Decision is south. That seems fair. At least we rolled it. Plus, at least that was just a straight d20 for that roll. Right, okay. Um, whether or not you want to met a game, and the fact that that was only a six for his wisdom about yeah. what decision to make, we'll just sidestep <laughs> entirely. <laughs> I don't care if it was a, a what you call it, a, a Boris decision, basically. <laughs> <laughs> a decision, but we'll go for it. Yeah. I think um, for, on that note, it's mostly just Crumbar going. The dire woods where I can hit things because it's closer to the abyss. <laughs> and I think that makes sense for Crumbar. Closer to hit stuff. Yeah. yeah. That does. Um, whereas he'd have to walk further to hit stuff if he went west. Yeah. He's so, not a walker. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there we go. We've got that decision. So I think maybe what happens is users debating the merits of if we can go here, we can get maybe the help of the dragons, or maybe they'll hurt us. Who knows? And then everybody going, yeah, but if we can fight in terrain that we're familiar with, I'm a for you know I'm of the forest. I can fight there. Blah blah blah. It's near the abyss, etc. It's within reach of a uh, horizon, realistically. Um, and then Crumbar maybe just barges in, uh, pushes everybody aside, and just points at the one at the south and goes, "We fight there." I think that's where we end the session, just with him stabbing the map, saying, we fight there. <laughs> I think that's quite a nice way to end that. Um, not to RP's character, but hey-ho, that's what happens. Um, <laughs> right. Besides exploding kittens, right? Yes, I like that one. I also, I like that one too, but if it's very copyright. Um, particularly <laughs> proud of that one. It's very good. Um... So, I'm happy to call it that, if everybody just wants to kind of go with that. Um, I was also going to suggest uh, Hello Kitty. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was also a very good one. I had a, a chuckle about that one just after Exploding Kittens was typed up. Um, I also think um, We Fight There is a good one. Um, but yeah. That's, I'm not going to just fill the chat with suggestions. You guys can vote, and then we'll pick, and that'll be it. So I have to say, I'm also tempted by... By... Okay, what's she typing? She's typing. I'm... <laughs> a dire situation, of course. Situation. I'll make a woman out of you. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Um... Mm -hmm. uh... But mm -hmm. I think we fight there, and... An exploding kitten or an exploded kitten or whatever would be best, but up to you guys. Uh, Eric, where does your uh, opinion lie besides making a. Saying it like that reduces copyright strikes. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um... <laughs> Switch to that like I'm just scared that like he'll be like, nope, copyright strike. Nah, I, think, I think we'd be fine if we called it exploding kittens, but I think exploding kitty is more accurate. Um, Reach, your thoughts? What one are we going for? I still like exploding kittens, and I'm just trying to bend it a wee bit, but I can't do it. No, I'm, I mean, yeah. let's just go with it. I'm happy with that. That sounds yeah. good to me. I was I was fond of it originally. The only other one I like beyond that, to be honest, is uh, Hello Kitty. So I think we'll stick with yeah. Exploding Kittens, Session 21. Exploding Kittens. It's also good for when Scott goes to watch this. And it uh, goes, I wonder what happened. Um, when it's called Exploding Kittens. Right, goals. We managed to complete a goal. Which is good. So, if somebody wants to update the goal tracker so that that's on the completed list, 
what are people's thoughts on what their next goal should be? And it was happening at the hellhole. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it really should be what investigate the hellhole, right? Yeah, yeah. engage like the that. hellhole. Haha. Uh -huh. So as soon as we're into the fight, XP. <laughs> Walk in. One moment till I level up, good sir. <laughs> yep. Uh, right, so what we're wording this as investigate. Uh, somebody else can type it. That's good. Uh, basically, investigate the direwood hellhole, I guess. Yeah. So yep, yep. Whoever's in there can type that up and do with that. I've updated the story point tracker for Sophie, who spent her story point with just Doria. She's also just gone, that's think. fine. Yep, yeah. she had to leave anyway at 10. And yeah. yeah, I think what we'll do since we are down to us three is, let me just check that out. Yeah, I don't know why, it's like the formatting's all weird on that one. It, it, it did change. Talking about the gold text. It's probably medium for now, let's face it. Because investigating isn't exactly uh, super deadly. Not yet, anyway. There we go. I see, when it's nice and easy walking the forest to get there. Yeah, it? there's a bit of travel first. Yeah. And then the explaining to Crumbar exactly what he's agreed to. Um, exploding kittens. <laughs> uh, still level four. Essentially, what he's been volunteered to. Yeah, exactly. Um, to be fair, it was a low wisdom roll. It's entirely his own fault. Um, as for that though, let's start with Eric, and we'll do the the cooldown chat, the post game chat. Oh. Mm. Well, the exploding cat was fun, of course. Of course, it was. Mm -hmm. I feel slighted that Arya's like, "You're not impressive enough for me to speak to." It's like, oof, it's a game of throwing shade at Eric, apparently. To be fair, right. I think what happened was she was busy with Ruya. She looks up, you walk in, normal. Mm. Then you walk in, your eyes flicker on blue like pilot lights. And then, right, welcome back, Sophie. Just so you know, the hello. session was called Exploding Kittens. Um, <laughs> the options were Hello Kitty, We Fight There, A Dire Situation, I'll Make a Woman Out of You, and then <laughs> We Settled for Exploding Kittens. Um, the next goal, I feel next goal that we've set is investigate the direwood hellhole. Okay. Because Crumbar rolled wisdom, which was no. a flat d20. Uh, of course it was. Right. And <laughs> odds were west, even with south, and we rolled south. Ah. So he he goes. The ending of the session was him barging everyone away from the map and pointing on we fight there. And logically uh -huh. speaking, it's closer to the abyss, so it's closer to things he knows were hittable. So, oh no, that was a good option, wasn't it? We could make friends out of that one. Possibly. No. 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 The no? one that Eric wanted was the yeah. one at the west with potential dragons. So, uh... yeah. Um, however, we're now doing our kind of wrap up chat, and I was explaining Ooh. to Eric that it wasn't just the throwing shit at Eric session, it was the <laughs> when Eric walks back in at the end and his pilot light eyes flicker back in. That's normal as far as Arya is concerned, who now has Ruya back in her life that she hasn't had for several scary hours. Um, oh yeah, that's the most important thing for me. And then, but at yeah. the same time, like, I, I'm kind of used to seeing him with like random blue bits, where I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, nice to see you. I know, so, yeah, no, I, that's now, what I was expecting. It was just uh, you saying, uh, oh, he's just been threatened. I'm like, whoa, calm the fuck down. <laughs> no, and also because obviously it, out of character, I have heard the entire thing about, you know, the cat rigging exploding. So I totally thought you'd gone into the room at the same time. And I'm like, whoa, that's, that, that would be something that would freaking like, you know, yeah, I think the confusion might have came from the fact that they had like a simultaneous conversation with what seemed like two versions of the story. So yeah. That's maybe the part that was a bit confusing because, yeah, she held that meeting at the same time. Um, Sneak snack. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, gotta be in many places, right? She, um, 
Anyway, Eric, please continue. <laughs> um... Um, I've lost the trailer for. <laughs> well, let, let's review what happened. To I heard for coming come back wisdom roll. Mm -hmm. So let's review what happened. Um, you learned that Justoria isn't specifically so keen on her dad. Uh, you also yeah. learned that she doesn't really know much about Ermos. Oh yeah, I had to tell people about me meeting the Wizard King. Yeah, I don't want to tell people that. I wanted to keep that secret, but I will. Yeah, I think it was more that just Doria needed to know where you stood. Yeah, I, I kind of left out the thing that uh, the, the king said I could call on him for a favour. Oh me. yeah, yeah, that not with that. <laughs> 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 I thought I better not say that at this point. Yeah, I think it's tactical, much like when Rich was like, let's not mention the king's god we killed. <laughs> yeah. There are some good tactical choices you are making as a party overall. I am like when you told uh, the Wizard King nothing about Eremos, despite whether or not that seems tactical now. Um, I mean, it felt tactical. <coughs> <coughs> yes. That's just that big gold guy choking him again. Choking him again. <laughs> 5d12. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, no, it felt like I, was, I thought I was being sneaky at the time, but mm. the Wizard King had... Uh, other ways of finding stuff out, apparently. Yeah. Definitely seems so, at least. Same with just Dory, though, right? <laughs> what we'd do when we're invading the Wizard King's domain. You're going in first and we're going in the other door. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hello, you said I could visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just go like, hey, you know I needed to borrow a favour of you and stuff. Well, uh, Step down as king, please. I love the phrase, borrow a favour. That is possibly my favourite <laughs> phrase. <laughs> it's like, isn't that implied in the term favour? <laughs> yes. Um, love it. Uh, yeah, so like that happened. Um, Justoria obviously seems kind of jealous that you got one of the eyes of Janus. That seems kind of impressive to her. Um, what else? What else seemed to have happened for Eric? Oh yeah, she can. Uh, I just need to nip back to Glitterhagen at some point, mm -hmm. even though we said we'd be going there a week ago. We're still not there, <laughs> and we're still not going there. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually going the exact opposite direction, in fact, of there. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can send Rudy exactly with a message. Our hit away from Glitterhagen. Yeah, Rish, yeah. Don't give or take a few hundred miles. Yeah, <laughs> you could literally place. just. It's like, guys, give me a D. Bang. <laughs> goes to gl goes to Glitterhagen. Literally, like, you could go to your bedroom with that hammer. And then, um, yep. obviously, then euphemistically go charge your hammer for a D. Then come back. And hopefully you remember your clothes both yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It would be a drink along with uh, Eric's euphemisms game, this would be. Um... And he was like, I guess I'll just go charge my hammer before we go on this adventure. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the thing though, right? She did say that she would do what she could to help you if you could get her something important that would be something your parents cared about, right? Something that would have like their essence, essentially, to it. Because, um, yeah, that's obviously something. I think the reason why you, you wouldn't the ring wouldn't have mattered because if they gave you that at a young age it's probably easier to track you with that now yeah because it's it, with me like for yeah, so it's kinda 15 easy. plus years maybe yeah so it's like your ring now as opposed to what was once theirs so he's maybe like had they lost a hand and it was pickled in some random jar and it was in a shelf <coughs> somewhere and it had like their family crest ring on it that's the type of thing you'd probably want to find had that been a thing that I didn't just ad lib into existence, so that's they're they're weird nobles, right? Of course they're yeah. freaky, um, but that is the type of thing like you'd maybe you find like you know something they they drank out of every day or like trinkets or like a hairbrush that your mom used every day or dad used every day. Like you'd need to find stuff that you would like you know was theirs fundamentally, like something nobody else really touched. Um, that obviously never went with them when they went missing, right? Cause a yeah, lot of it's been 15 lot, years, so... 
so yeah, you need to find something that was super important that would hold that kind of charge for that long. Um, Maybe it's painting their painting. That might not even be easy, right, to find that. It might not be something that's at the house anymore. It might be something you have to go find. So, yeah. And then you have to go all the way back to Justoria and be like... I I just think Justoria and hit the hammer. <laughs> but, uh, um, with your euphemisms, that didn't sound as good as it should have done. Well, we'll find yeah. out. Um, every second time's the charm. The uh, yeah, anything else you'll add? Because I think that, like I'd say Eric's got quite a big kind of direction, really, for his own personal shit. Yeah, <laughs> you have a lot of personal shit happening. <laughs> I do, and uh, I think that's me. Good session. Happy. Yeah. Um, what about yourself? Are you now that you're back? Can I give us the the yes, wrap up chat? Yes, yeah, I'm back. Um, well, I have to say, I had not connected a lot of the dots, and I think that I might have, if I had, that probably would have affected how I played, like, a few sessions before, and what priorities I considered to have been. But, um, hey, we're, we're getting there, I'm uh, finally connecting the dots, so that's important. <laughs> um, I think for me, the highlight of the session is the, 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 the exploding kitty and the fact that there were two Gestoria conversations that happened at once. That's kind of like, wow. Mm. Um, so that was something that I found to be very, very interesting. And uh, yeah, I'm curious how, you know, our interactions will go from now onwards that, you know, we don't have somebody that needs to, you know, mind a tail that has a mind of their own and that <laughs> sort of thing. And we just have like an actual, you know, humanoid character that's, Mm. Obviously, gonna have, be a bit trauma traumatized from being like that for a while, I guess. Yeah, forcibly I, rebuilt. I yeah, <laughs> to like freaking purge her sleep or meow from time to time or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe she knocks something over. She's it wasn't me. It was a te Oh no! <laughs> like, oh, actually, it was me this time. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm fully expecting that sort of stuff. <laughs> but that should be interesting to watch. Yeah. No, because and it, oh. obviously now we're embarking on a new adventure, so um, yeah, um, yeah, I'm really excited about that as well. The gift as well you received, the bracelet as well. Yeah, that'll be oh yeah, that that went straight to the inventory, mm -hmm. and I'm like, ooh, get out of jail free card, yes please. I'm just hoping it's not just you. We didn't actually ask her that, but I presume it's a party thing. But we'll to be see. honest, when <laughs> activating it, I would be asking all of you to grab a hold on me, like Harry Potter style, so... Uh, yeah. yeah, diagonally. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we got that. Also, please don't sue us. Um, the, anything else you want to add, Arya? I'd say it's, you've pretty much covered everything I would have thought you would have and no, more. That's, so. that's me. Mm -hmm. uh, well, former Kitty LaKill. Yeah. Mm. Thoughts? Uh... I thought I'd be a cat for longer, to be fair, but mm. then I was just like, oh no, we might not see her for a while. No, I need to do this now, I need to do this now. <laughs> I mean, you say that, right? But considering we do see three hours a session normally, right? Give or take. Yeah. And we've done 21 sessions. True. That is like, what, 60 odd? 63. Yeah, 63 hours, give or take. So yeah, you've, you've been a cat for 63 hours of this game. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Plus 25 years previously. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So also, this game's probably been about four or five weeks at least. Well, two months plus all that. <laughs> two months, yeah. Two months, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you've been a cat for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, and who's to say you wouldn't end up pissing off another wizard? So. <laughs> True. <laughs> a king, one might say. Um, guess being put back to being a cat would actually be quite an okay punishment if you yeah. crossed the wizard king. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Considering what he did to the five d twelve damage guy. Yeah. 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 It's fine. Uh, yeah. Anything else you enjoyed besides being a cat shorter than you thought you would be? <laughs> um, I quite like throwing food. Mm -hmm. but Eric and him failing okay. the dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Not only shade was thrown, but profiteroles too. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that, that kind of made sense, so it was good timing for the... So, you've met my father before. Wait, what? Smack. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate you guys. I really want to drop it rolls now. And <laughs> <laughs> not barbecued scorpion? Come on. <laughs> oh, the delicacy of this game. Yeah, anything else you want to add, Sophie? No, I think that was... Yeah, it was um, yeah, yeah. pretty monumentous for you, quite frankly. Mm. Uh, renaissance of the cat variety. There's no good puns for that. Um, <laughs> the Meowsons didn't really have the same effect to it, sadly. <laughs> um, reach. Oh, no, that's just another way. Uh, oh. Because I'm tight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot more RP, this one. Uh, Mm. Yeah, I still don't know if I trust Justoria, but still we're going to be using her for a wee bit, one way or another. That's... And I think you could probably safely guess that she's willing to use you guys for a bit too, right? Yeah, like, there's yeah. definitely not, oh my god, you're my best buds now, let's go and get no. scones together. It's, um, I think there's Our a... goals align, at least slightly at the moment, yeah, that's really yeah. about it. Yeah. You've proven to not just be a bag of dicks, so... <laughs> Yeah, he's have done. Even I guess your kind of defense of Eremos has probably impressed her, right? Because it showed that you were kind of decent folks. Being like, that's a kid, mate. Don't just you know treat yeah. it like shit. And he's like, this is my stuff. Bye. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'd say it's healthy to be like guarded in general, probably. Um. Yeah, and else? to take over the vault is my guess, which is <laughs> could be equally as bad as the Wizard King, but anyway. Yeah. To be fair, she is generally liked, though, by everyone. Yeah. He is openly respected by everyone. <laughs> Forcibly, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. The only person that would ever actually, and you, most of you would know this given your races, um, especially Kitty, the only person that would actually out and out say they don't give a fuck about the Wizard King is the Elf Queen, because she doesn't give a fuck about him. As far as she's concerned, he will die, and she will endure. And that's as far as she's concerned. That's not particularly hidden knowledge. The Elf Queen doesn't give a fuck about his kingdom at all. Not enough to start war or anything with them. She's happy with her space and he does not mess with her space and she doesn't really care about his space because she's happy with hers. Which is the Queenswood, all the way up to the kind of northeast. Uh, which is like up there, all the Queenswood. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, she's happy with all that weird space. But yeah, uh, anything else? No, uh we know what we're doing now, so I'm just looking forward to the next one. That's yes, yeah, he's uh, yes. take a completely fully rested, armed and operational crumb bar yeah. without any argument down south. And we are obviously rushing back to tell the uh, the gold dragon that his son's in uh -huh. fighting, fighting for his death. <laughs> his life yep. the moment, anyway. Total, yeah, totally helping everything. poor Gil out. Yes. <laughs> Possibly two months in the grave. Like, yes. yep. <laughs> yep. Slowly, the armies of hell assembling neatly in, in lines, because as you know, things that die in the abyss or just come through in the abyss neatly line up, um, as we've seen from the previous maps. Um, but yeah, I don't know, that won't ever come back and bite in the ass, let's face it. How, how could yeah, it possibly? Sure it yeah. <laughs> when it was only two months later, I could have saved him, <laughs> I could have brought him back. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> Oh, uh, you'll yeah. finally get to, oh, like, no. the Great Gold Worm. By the way, your son's in trouble. Oh, I got him, like, months ago. Uh, yeah, he just <laughs> died. Said you were a bunch of dicks, didn't want to speak to you anymore, took his ball and went home. Um, <laughs> yep, all good. Um, I'm surprised I've been able to speak as much as I have tonight, to be honest, given my uh, dental joy. Um... But yeah. Actually, you were sounding a wee bit lispy at the beginning, but that was only one wee bit you said, and since then you've been as clear as anything. I think it's like, because I've just kind of got distracted by the game, so yeah. it has helped, uh, whereas obviously I was super aware of uh, it at the you're start. You're talking about it though, I can hear that mm -hmm. again. <laughs> oh yeah, it's because I'm hyper aware of it though, I think it's just yeah. um, my own fault. Like, yeah. But yeah, 
it should obviously settle down hopefully if it hasn't done by Friday this is just how I sound now I guess um, yeah. which is fun I think as well when I do voices it seems to go away but anyway that's an aside Anybody got anything else you want to add before we wrap up because I'm happy no. if you are happy I'm happy good well goodbye everybody thank you for playing bye everyone adios bye. amigo <laughs> <laughs>